Well, praise the Lord, take your Bible and turn with me to the book of Colossians, Colossians chapter 3. Brother Ben got to go to the place where they have the crowns and all that stuff, got to see where kings and queens have walked, got to see where men of great renown and women of great renown, good or bad, or good and bad, have walked and stayed and lived and all that, and, and I got to go see Eric Hill, amen. <clears throat> and Doug Carriger, what a blessing that was, and meet some folks there, that, uh, <clears throat> that is great. I enjoyed seeing the photographs from London and uh, the, the blessing, you know, I'm just a homebody, I'm not a... There's not a whole lot that wells up. I do want to one day go to Ireland before I die or after I die. I don't care. It's in my carcass over there, whatever. Um, but Scotland, I'd love to see Scotland. I really want to go uh, do some work with the Hodnets for a little bit. I love the Hodnets. I'd love to go over and just uh, do some mission work with them and, and then do some sightseeing over there in Scotland. But, uh, you know, it's like being home. Praise the Lord for home. Uh, it's pretty. To see, you know, the Carolinas, it's pretty to see eastern Tennessee, but Dorothy's right, man, I'm telling you, there's no place like home, I just say hallelujah. Hopefully you found yourself in Colossians 3, uh, I'll begin reading in verse number 1, as soon as I get to Colossians 3, <clears throat> maybe I should listen to the preacher, it'd be a good thing, but I do thank you for just... Uh, Man, just serving, uh, serving with us, it is a joy. Keep uh, Lydia and Jake and Jen and Philip and John and I, they keep them in prayer. Uh, they'll be heading back, well, they're probably eh, close, they're probably on the road about now, uh, somewhere they'll be home this afternoon, just pray for them. Um, <clears throat> older I get, the less I enjoy driving and the less I enjoy other people driving. So, um, Colossians chapter 3, verse 1. <clears throat> Still not there, Colossians 1. If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God, when Christ, who is our life, shall appear. Then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Father, we love you. Thank you for the songs we were blessed to lift to you. And I pray, God, that they <clears throat> stirred our heart. They were a blessing to you, I pray. And Lord, the songs that we got to hear, I thank you for them. Thank you that, Lord, you allow us to be part of your work in so many different ways and use our talents. And Lord, I thank you for that. And Thank you for the young ones that sang and for <clears throat> Ben and Caleb. Pray you bless them all. Lord, help us here this morning. Bless the reading of your word and the hearing of it that, God, you would speak in a mighty way. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you. Go ahead and be seated. <clears throat> so what, what is the absolute most pleasing thing to God? Think about this for a second. What is the absolute most pleasing thing, the singular most profound, pleasing thing to God. It's one word, and that one word is Jesus. That, that is the one thing that is most pleasing to God. Well, then you get to Colossians 3, and you look at verse number 1. He's talking, you know, if you then be risen with Christ. If you're saved, if you have trusted Christ as your Savior, then verse 2, set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth, for ye are dead. Paul calls us, look, we ought to mortify the members of the flesh. We ought, to, we ought to die to self so that Christ can live through us. Verse 4 says, when Christ who is our life. And I'm, I'm, the Lord has led to kind of preach on some things leading to revival. What, why do we need it? Why do we have it? All, all this stuff. We don't have a revival meeting scheduled uh, anytime soon until October when Brother Mark McGahey gets here, but I'm not talking about a meeting. I hope you understand that. I think the Lord kind of put it on me at this period of time because we don't have 
someone coming because it's not a scheduled meeting. It is a heart condition where I get tired of the same old thing, where I get tired of the mundane. I get tired of the mediocre, and I want God to do a mighty work in my life and through me. That is really what revival is, if you want to... just narrow it down to some simple thing where God just ignites a fire in my soul and I want to live for Him. That's really what it is. And so in verse 4 of Colossians 3, it says, When Christ who is our life. God, I know that there's times in my life where that's not true. And so I'm asking you, God, make that true, that you would be my life. Not me. Not, Not ministry. Man, do you know how many times... Pastors or other people can get uh, can make an idol out of ministry, and we forget the God we serve. Man, Lord, don't let me get there. I, I've seen that. I've I've heard that. I've talked to people who who fall into that. And God, I beg you not to let that ever be me. Lord, not to make an idol out of ministry. Well, we can do the same thing with work. We can do the same thing with even things that are good. We can do the same thing with family. We can do these things where literally good things that God says, these are good and right, we make an idol out of them, and it pulls us away from worshiping the Christ who saved us. And we begin to worship ministry or family or work or whatever it is. And uh, as we get through the next few weeks and kind of talk about some of these things, man, I'm excited about what God has for us. And and I do pray that at the end of it, uh, there'd be some stirring of hearts, that there'd be uh, some excitement about the things of God, that he'd shake us and wake us out of our slumber, so to speak. Um, Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ. So, uh, whatever that all things is, and we've talked about it before, there's, there's all things, there's nothing, whatever the all things is. I, I can't jump off a 50-story building through Christ, which strengtheneth me. So that's not part of all things. What is part of all things are the things that he's told us to do. I can do those things through Christ. I can't do them through my own strength. I can't do them through my own wisdom. I can't do them through my own unction. I can't do them through trying to motivate myself. I can't do them sufficiently without Jesus. But in Jesus, I can do them. And they'd bring glory to his holy name. That's a powerful, amazing thought. So it, it, keep your place. We're going to look at parts of Colossians chapter 1, and we're going to look at parts of 1 Thessalonians. So turn over just a couple pages to 1 Thessalonians. Uh, Paul writes this letter to the church at Colossae, and he writes a letter to the church at Thessalonica, and he's trying to help them along with their Christian life. These are two different cultures, two different sets of problems, but they're all people and all us people tend to have the same problems, amen? And, and I'm very thankful that God addresses those things in His Word. I'm very thankful that God gave wisdom, well, salvation, and then wisdom to the Apostle Paul that we can look in here and be helped by that, hallelujah. So 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse number 1, uh, the Bible says, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, under the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ, grace be unto you in peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. <clears throat> so we're talking about, I mean, we'll get into talking about um, God stirring us, trying to just begging God for a spirit of revival. And leading into that this morning, I want to talk about some things that matter. The title, if you want to have one, would be It Matters. Now, the it we're going to see is going to change. There's going to be several it's, amen, (laughs) because there's a lot of things that matter, amen. And and ironically, there's a lot of things that really don't matter. And we as as humans are so skilled at making those things that don't matter matter and making those things that matter not matter. (laughs) We're very, very skilled at that. And I love the word we because it makes me feel better, amen. Not necessarily accusing you of that. Although I feel like we're all pretty much human here, we all pretty much do the same thing. It matters. The first thing 
in this text that we see that matters is it matters who you hang out with. That matters. Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus and to the church of the Thessalonians, it matters who you hang out with. You, you are who you associate with. <clears throat> you know, I was 15 and 16 and 17. My mom was was more, she was older, she was 21 years older than me, so whatever age that would correspond to, and she'd lived a whole lot longer than me, and she'd been through all these things. I was still 15 and 16 and 17. Now, uh, much like some of uh, your children, it, I woke up one day, and miraculously, I just knew everything. I was basically omniscient. I pretty well knew everything. And all the stuff my mom was trying to tell me to do, I'm like, nah, you don't understand. And I literally thought that. You just don't understand. <laughs> my mom, who's been there, done that, survived it, amen? You just don't understand. <clears throat> and she would tell me things like, you know, you're going to become the, the people you hang out with. Nah, I'm not going to be like them. They're just fun to hang out with. In case you didn't figure it out, I was hanging out with some questionable characters. And I got in trouble, and things happened, and I made some life changes, and got in more trouble, and things happened, and I was probably 23 or 24 I'll have to go back and figure out exact dates, but <clears throat> I was in the desert of Kuwait. And, and I'm not kidding. You know, people talk about, you know, they have an epiphany of this, that, or the other. <laughs> I'm sitting out there in the middle of the desert, and I thought, my mom was right. <laughs> Dude, she was right. Man, if I'd only listened. Now, I'm not here, you know, singing the Disney song, Mother Knows Best, necessarily, because <clears throat> some, sometimes moms don't. I mean, I'm not talking about you people, but, but you all know people whose moms didn't know best, right? We're, we're not talking about those folks. We're talking about my mom, who's in heaven, and she was right. All those people that I hung out with, they weren't the good crowd. And, you know, it, it became a point when I was about 17 where she was scared of the guys I was running with because they're a bad influence, but it just so happened that I was the, I was the organizer. I was the, the guy who was the worst influence on them. And I went from that, you know, 15-year-old to 17 years old, and, man, it was just, uh, it was just terrible. It matters who you hang out with. It matters who you allow to have influence over your life. It matters. Uh, you can't control necessarily the people you work with. You, you, you can control where you work or whatever. I, I get that. But you can't really control the people you work with. You can't control uh, necessarily the people you go to school with. You can't control, uh, you know, so, sometimes we, we get into some things we enjoy uh, you know, one of the big things now is is that, you know, throw a Frisbee into a basket sort of deal. Disc golf. Okay, thank you, Lord, for telling me what that was. <clears throat> and, and you might meet some weird, dark, crazy people in doing some things like that. You don't have to listen to them. It's okay. You, you might, you, you know, a few years back it was skateboarding. There's nothing wrong with a skateboard. Except that I can't stand on one without breaking bones. But <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with a skateboard. But sometimes you get around people that might be a little more questionable. And you don't have to listen to them. You don't have to be influenced by them. You've got to realize it matters who you hang out with. There's an awful lot of things that there's nothing right or wrong um, with them, you know, they're talking about someone. Uh, someone said they're they're talking about 
flag football in the next Olympics, I think. Is that a, is that a rumor that it, it is going to be in the next Olympics? And so I was thinking, well, why did they pick flag football and not hobby horse? Because it's such a big sport in places <laughs> and whatever. But it doesn't really matter what the activity is. Most activities aren't righteous or unrighteous, whatever. I'm, I'm talking about, you know, just stuff. I'm not talking about going to the nightclub. I'm not talking about that stuff. I'm just talking about normal things. There's all kinds of people there. Well, if we realize and, and understand that God could be opening up a door for us to, to be a gospel witness, to be a help to these folks, but being careful not to be influenced by the wrong influence. You know, I mean, now the big thing, people want to be influencers, um, I can't wait until that fad dies out. Lord help us. Uh, but we're listening to people who, I mean, we got to be careful. Oh, but this guy's a Christian. Do you know that that word has no definition? I mean, the Bible definition is that we're following Jesus. I, I have a hard time finding any of these Christian influencers who even know who Jesus is. You got to be careful who's influencing you. It matters. It matters. He says uh, there in verse 1, Paul and Silvanus and Timotheus, I mean, he's hanging out with these folks that are trying to, they're trying to lift each other up in, in serving Christ. They're trying to lift each other up so that they can be a help, in this case, to the church at Thessalonica. They're trying to help folks lift each other up. Back over in Colossians chapter 1, verse 1, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will of God and Timotheus, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ, which be a Colossae. It matters who you hang out with. It really does. It makes a difference. And, I mean, just, just think about it. Let's say, you know, I have these, these friends and they're, they're shady and whatever, but I hang around with them. I try my best not to let them influence me. And then let's say, let's say Levi wants to come along. It's like, hmm. I don't know that Levi should hang around with these guys. He's young. He's young in the Lord. He's impressionable. I just don't know that that's a good idea. Well, Look, if that's the case, it's probably not a good idea for me to go either, right? I mean, if I'm, if I'm in the midst of a group of people that it would not be good for me to carry someone else there, then maybe I'm setting myself up for a great fall somewhere down, down the road. And that's what I did when I was 14 and 15 and whatever. I set myself up. I didn't listen to mom. I didn't listen to anybody I mean, because they didn't understand. And how on earth could you know you're old? And now I'm old, and I'm thinking, listen, young folks, look, I've been there, I've done that, I survived it. I got t-shirts older than you. <laughs> listen, I love you. I don't want you to go through the same harm that I went through. That's what my mom was trying to tell me, but I knew better. Until I woke up one day. And realized that my mama was right. Thank you, Lord, for showing me that my mama was right. I wish I had noticed earlier. No. It matters who you hang out with. Christians will lift you up. I mean, not professing Christians, biblical Christians. They'll lift you up. If people are smashing you down, that's probably not a good, good place for you to get your influence and, and be around. You, you can be there and be a witness. You know, the best, the best thing you can hang around is God's holy word because it's, it's not ever going to lead you wrong. The Bible happens to be the best, best person, best thing you can hang around with is God's word. But take knowledge that it matters who you hang out with. Look at verse 2 here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 1. Verse 2 through 4, We give thanks to God always for you all making mention of you in our prayers. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father, knowing, brethren beloved, your election of God. So here in these verses, it, it matters what matters to you. All right? So it matters what matters to you. We all have different interests. We all have different personalities. Can you imagine 
a world. Can you imagine a Wichita where every single person was just like Con Howerton? The population of Wichita, Kansas would rapidly decrease. And we'd be sending out annoying missionaries all over the country or wherever, you know. I mean, the, if, if what matters to you is the same thing that matters to God, man, he's going to bless your life in a mighty way. And, you know, being in, in God's perfect order just brings with it its own strength, its own grace, its own just kind of lifting upness. It's a good word. <clears throat> but it matters what matters to you. Paul, in these verses, he highlights the spiritual things about these people. We give thanks unto God always for you all. So... So Paul was the type of person, he'd go to a church, spend several months there, sometimes, I mean, in, in Corinth, he was there for over three years, um, Ephesus, three years. So he would know some of these people, right? So he, he would know them by name, and he would know uh, where they live, and he would know about their children, and he would know about them. So do you suppose that Paul might have known some negative things about these people? Yes, but to him, that's not what mattered. What mattered was their walk with God, and here he's commending that. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith. You taught Sunday school. You uh, invited folks to church. You helped clean. You cooked some food. You uh, helped with the fixing the broken stuff. You did this, your work of faith. Every one of those people had sufficient negative things. We all do. You have sufficient negative stuff. I got negative stuff. We all have negative stuff. And you, can, you don't have to dig deep to find it, do you? In any person, you pick a person, it doesn't take long to find the dark and the ugly, right? And you may need to dig to find the good and the light and the righteous, but it's worth digging for. And Paul shows us there that, look, it matters what matters to you. And if what you're looking for is the righteous, if what you're looking for is what God is doing in their life and what they are trying to do to faithfully serve Him, what they need is not someone to come and correct them at every stance. What they need is for someone to come along and, and lift them up and help them and say, man, you're doing a good job, and I'm here to help you carry this load. I want you to know I'm praying for you. That's what he says right there. I believe in you, and I know that there's a God in heaven that loves you, and He also also is helping you from day to day, step by step, one inch at a time in service to him. It matters what matters to you. There is way, there is so much negative in the world, it's easy, easy, easy to find. So I would say, how about you rise up a little bit and start looking for the spiritual, start looking for the good, start looking for the righteous, and let that be what matters to you. Because we all have ample bad. We all do. It's not hard to find. Verse number three by itself there, if you look, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God and the Father. In addition, or what might help with what matters to you is what you're looking for and what you're listening for. Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of God our Father. Um, he says in, in, verse, in, in Colossians chapter, chapter 1, over just a page or two, Colossians chapter 1, verse 1, uh, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timotheus our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ which are at Colossae, grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus. It matters what you're looking for or what you're listening for. It matters. Man, I'm telling you, there's so much negativity going on right now, it's insane. It is absolutely insane. And I'm telling you, if some lost person were to get on Facebook to try to find out how to trust Jesus as Savior, they're going to get off and say, I ain't never, I ain't never doing that ever. 
There is so much ignorant negativity, accusations. There's so much crazy, ungodly chaos going on right now among people that are, are the same. And it's, it's ignorant. That's at best. I'm going to stick with ignorant because otherwise it's nefarious and that's even worse. But it, it, it's astounding at what we look for or listen for. I love what Paul does here. Look, I promise you there's things that probably weren't all that perfect about these Thessalonians. And I promise you there probably was some stuff about the people in Colossae that wasn't all that great. But he chooses to look and he chooses to listen to that which is feeding their righteousness and holiness and the cause of Christ. Not accentuating that which, which brings glory to Satan, the darkness. It's all there. There's plenty to look at. But, but I'm telling you, if, if Larissa is trying to grow in Jesus, me taking a hatchet to her ankles is not going to help her. It's not going to help her. Oh, I can say all kinds of truth, but if all I do is beat her up, she's never going to grow. She's never going to flourish. She's never going to really become what God would want her to become. I'm not, I mean, Jesus said, go and sin no more. I'm not saying be ignorant about what's going on. But look, it, it's so easy to see and to hear the negative, especially right now. It's, it's crazy what's going on. Meanwhile, there's people who are just desperately trying to serve Jesus, and it's a struggle. It's a struggle. Today, it's 23 years I've been a pastor. How many of you would believe that the last nine years, I've never sinned. How many would you would believe that? Man, it's a struggle. It doesn't matter who you are. It's hard to get up sometimes. It's hard to get out of bed and face what you know you got to face. It's hard to, to make that phone call. It's hard to answer that phone call. It's hard to, to figure out what to say in response to that email or whatever. I mean, you sit and stare at things. You're like, God, I can't do this right now. I don't, know, I don't even know what to say right now. I don't know how to behave. I don't know how to help this person. I don't, I don't know what to do. It matters what you look for. And what you listen for. And I'm telling you, that will help what matters to you. Because once you try to find some, you know, little nuggets of glory in a person, it changes everything. Changes everything. We were, uh, we were in Pigeon Forge a couple weeks ago. Part of it feels like yesterday, Right? And part of it feels like 11 years ago. <laughs> and, and I loved spending that time with those young folks and old folks alike. It was, it was pretty raw time because we were exhausted. You remember we'd get back in the room at like 8.30 or 9. And then we'd try to eat something and talk and have devotion. And, and man, it was raw. We were exhausted. Man, I loved that time. Seeing just some... Some jewels of glory in every one of these young folks that went with us. It was so powerful. It matters what you're looking for and what you're listening for. It matters. And I know we could carry that back over into the influencer or TV or whatever. But look, I'm just talking about interpersonal relationships. It matters what you're looking for. Because I promise you it won't take more than about two and a half seconds for you to find all kinds of darkness and bad things about Con Howerton. I promise you it won't take long at all. And you may have to spend a little extra time to find something worthy of redemption in Con Howerton, but I promise you it's worth it. I promise you it's worth it with your neighbor. I promise you it's worth it with the person next to you. I promise it's worth it to the person you're married to. <laughs> it's easy to find some negative bad things with the person you're married to. Right, babe? She agrees with me. Amen. That's a positive. That's, that's good. <clears throat> and I'm telling you, it's worth it. <clears throat> Fourth and last for today, verse number four by itself in 1 Thessalonians 1, knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God, it matters what you focus on. I know these three things are pretty similar, 
<clears throat> but I want to talk about them individually on purpose. It matters what you focus on, what you highlight. I mean, think about, think about your Bible. <clears throat> I mean, things stick out to you and you highlight them or you underline them or whatever. I don't have anything. In, this is my preaching Bible. I, am, I try my best to hide it, but I am so incredibly OCD and whatever that if I have any marks in this Bible, it's going to distract me and I'll never get back on track. So I have a preaching Bible with nothing in it. I've preached with my other Bibles before. Hmm. I wonder why I wrote that. Huh. That's weird. <clears throat> I can't do it, but, you know, you got your Bible, hopefully, that you do mark up. I want to encourage you to mark it up if you haven't. Those things that God speaks to you about, highlight them. It matters what you highlight. It matters what you highlight about a person. It matters what you highlight about uh, your workplace. It matters what you highlight. I mean, I, I, I was uh, this, this week in South Carolina doing the, the ministry training thing for Wounded Spirits. It, it dawned on me, like, you know, how would I, how would I talk about my child? If, if I was trying to, to tell you about my child, whatever, whatever they are. Okay, so um, <clears throat> Kimber's one of my favorite singers. So, um, and hopefully there's another young man you'll get to meet in September who's also one of my new favorite singers. He's an amazing singer. <clears throat> Fantastic preacher. Um, how would I talk about my daughter? Well, <clears throat> maybe sometimes when we're trying to figure out what we focus on, when we're talking about our church family, or we're talking about the Bible, or we're talking about Jesus, or we're talking about Christianity, or whatever, I mean, it matters what you focus on. Yeah, I've been a Christian for 21 years, but it really hasn't done anything for me yet. Still hanging on and trying, but it sure hasn't done anything for me yet. Yes, it has. Man, you've been accepted in the beloved. You've got a church family that loves you. You've got a God who repeats over and over and over again, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I'm going to be with you even if you don't want me to. I'm still there, and I'm still going to whisper in your ear by the Holy Ghost that, hey, I love you, and I'm for you, and I don't think you should do this, or I don't think you should say that, or maybe I'll not uh, act that way, or whatever. I mean, praise the Lord, we've got all that, amen? And that's a gift that we have. It matters what you focus on. There's a lot of other things to know about these people, but what he focused on was what was leading them toward victory in Christ. Colossians 3, one page over to the left. Verse 16, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, Singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Look, <clears throat> I'm telling you, it, it matters who you hang out with. It matters what matters to you. It matters what you're look, looking for, what you're listening for, and it matters what you focus on or what you highlight. And I'm telling you, it all starts with this book right here. This book right here, the Holy Ghost will work through this book. The Holy Spirit will never give you any guidance that's contrary to this book right here. <clears throat> and when you know what the book says, it just makes you a whole lot more confidence in, in trusting what the Holy Spirit might be saying. It's powerful. If you, can, if you can anchor yourself to the Word of God, I promise you it will change everything it'll it'll put it, it'll put suffering in context it, it'll put the hard times in context it, it will help you to understand that even the suffering has a place in the work of the lord he's not going to let that go to waste he didn't make all the suffering happen but but he knows it's there and he knows what you're going through and, and he will use it if you give it to him 
We'll talk about that tonight. I hope you can come and be helped tonight. But man, I'm telling you, it matters. It matters. You matter to Him. For God so loved you personally, you personal, your name, that He gave His only begotten Son, that your name believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. You. You personally. That is such a powerful truth. It's not just a a collective thing. It's you personally that God loves so much that He knew the only way to heal the breach of sin was holy blood. And the only one with holy blood is named Jesus, God the Son. Man, would you let him help you? We're going to be talking about things that have to do with revival. Starting off with this thing. It matters, and there's a whole bunch of things that go underneath that. We just looked at four today. It matters. You matter to him. Man, I want to encourage you. If you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, would you let someone take a Bible and show you what God says about how you can know that you have eternal life? Because it doesn't matter what I say and it doesn't matter what I think. It just matters what God has said. We'd love to take a Bible and show you what God says about how you can know. Christian, would you ask God to help you to make the things that matter the things that matter to Him? Would you ask Him to help you this morning? We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for your love for us, your guidance, your hand in our lives, your leadership through the Spirit. God in heaven, I pray. For any that might be here that's never trusted you as Savior, God, would you show them this morning that you love them, that you gave your only begotten Son. Jesus, would you show them that you went onto that cross because you love them. You shed your blood so that they can have eternal life. God, would you help the Christians in the house to understand that you really would like to help us put things in priority and right perspective and all of that. If we'd let you, Lord, would you do that this morning? We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Would you stand with me while the musicians play? Would you take a moment to come before a glorious throne of grace and spend a moment with a God that loves you? you to take your hymnal, turn to song number 160, sing along there with Brother Ben, turn your eyes upon Jesus, song number 160.
together this morning. I do pray you'd bless just the last few minutes of the service. Be with every heart that's struggling this morning. Be with every person, Lord, that's just things going on. Lord, there's a lot going on. I pray for your help, your wisdom, your grace. I pray that, Lord, you'd give us strength, um, Lord, to press on. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <clears throat> Go ahead and be seated. 